Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. It has a sales force in the form of people who are actually helping guests pick the right solutions. Sales is all about finding great solutions for your customers. It sure is. And when it comes to Indian food, not everybody around here wakes up saying, when can I have my next Indian meal? And Or if they do decide to come to uh, an Indian restaurant, how do they know what to pick? Hey, everybody. It's Scott. This is Wednesday. This is your Pitchworks podcast, and this is Raji Sankar coming in to talk to us today. So... One of the things that's always mystified me is how it is that you can get your business to be almost self-service, right? Get it to the point where people come in the door and they know what they want to buy. They know that they want to buy it. Those kinds of things are are always intriguing. It's it's the frictionless transaction. And we're going to talk to Raji a little bit about how that works. Messaging, merchandising, what menus look like. How do you, you know, basically work with people to give them what they need to actually go through with the transaction rather than actually like grabbing them off the sidewalk and asking them to come in. So interesting conversation about her business, Chula Indian Barbecue. Uh, If this is the first time you're hearing our show, please consider subscribing. Uh, Every week on Wednesday, we put out a new show. It's about sales, marketing, startups, uh, all kinds of interesting things. And uh, there's a website, there's social media stuff. You can always find us out there on the internet Look for Pitchworks, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. And just included in that, I want you to understand that there is an offer of support. If there's something that you need from us, whether it be, you know, maybe a change that you'd like us to make to the show or a guest that you'd like to see, we are all ears. Speaking of being all ears, let's hear what Raji has to say about this frictionless transaction I'm chasing. All right, so... uh, I suppose we should probably start the show. <laughs> Raji Sankar, how are you? Wonderful. How are you? Well, I don't think I'm doing as well as you. You were a just a very popular guest last night at Kit Mueller's uh, Speak Freely event. Uh, I, I heard great, great reviews from you being up on stage. Thank you so much. And you know how Kit is. He can uh, make anyone look good. Well, I... Well, hmm, he's got his work cut out yeah. if he's going to take me on as a client. But that's another story for another day. So... Chula, am I saying that right? Absolutely. Indian barbecue. Now, suffice it to say that no one expects to find a sales rep inside of any of your locations, right? So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be somebody sitting around saying, um, you know, how, how does this figure into the whole pitch universe? And I'm going to try to set it up because I think that um, framing our conversation might be useful. The language of merchandising and naming and, and menutizing, which is a word I just made up in honor of your visit. Um, these are dark arts, right? These are things that like no one ever talks about. Like how do you name a food item that's going to go on a menu? And I want to dig into that with you a little bit. But, but first, I think, you know, I, I, I'd kind of like to hear a little bit about, you know, your story. How did you end up at this particular juncture that you're at now? So... Um Started out uh, about in 2003, yeah. uh, looking at uh, food because we were foodies. Oh, yeah. And uh, looked at um, writing a business plan on Indian food. We had caught on to the wave of fast casual. We predicted that fast casual was going to be the next big thing. Yeah. Panera and Chipotle had just started uh, growing. Um, Chipotle was about 100 units. Panera was making waves. And we knew that, you know, food that is really high quality, great ingredients, that's made quickly and made to order, and a family of four can eat multiple times a week. That's really what fast casual was about. That's very useful, again, in that sort of framing this conversation. So you you kind of consider what you're doing to be in that sort of a realm where it's a restaurant, it's not a factory. Yes. Um, there's a higher quality element. Am I right in that? Absolutely. Like you're going to say no. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no we have premium quality. Nope, Absolutely. it's all crap, Scott. <laughs> Thanks so much for pointing that out. Um, and this was in 2003, 2003 that you started looking at this. Yeah, we wrote a business plan. And um, 
You talk about sales. What does this have to do with sales? When you think about it, we look at a restaurant like a manufacturing facility. Yep. It has a sales force in the form of people who are actually helping guests pick the right solutions. Sales is all about finding great solutions for your customers. It sure is. And when it comes to Indian food, not everybody around here wakes up saying, when can I have my next Indian meal? And Or if they do decide to come to an uh, uh, Indian restaurant, how do they know what to pick? So making that easy. Yes. was one of the biggest challenges uh, I, that I, we took I, on. Let me piggyback on that. Because yes. um, first of all, when I say people don't think about sales in this way, I, I think we need to clarify that, right? So we're used to something not being a refined process. That's Agreed. where a salesperson yes. a lot of time comes in. Yes. So you need, a, you need a sales rep to explain to you four-cylinder versus six-cylinder car. You need a sales rep to talk to you about this phone system at your office versus that phone because it's all customized and it's very complex and dense. I think the the high point of the art form is make it so that the customer is literally selling themselves in line. They're, they're, it's been refined to a point where there is no intervention required. That is so beautiful. Well, That's exactly it. But 2003 is kind of a long time ago. It was a long time ago. So what happened? So we wrote the business plan. We realized quickly um, we came from the tech world, did not know the industry very much. Um, and then the restaurant business was new to us. Uh, we looked around. There was not much Indian happening uh, at the time, as in a mainstream world. Right. Um, so now, is that is that a statement about... Like the entire U.S.? Is no, that a statement where just we, about Western like PA? Like we're Western PA, Cleveland area, which okay. were our markets. Um, uh, my business partner and co-CEO lives in Cleveland. Okay. We won't hold that against him, right? Like yeah. so. You know what? I yeah. don't know. I'm a little grudgy. <laughs> I'm a little, little bit grudgy. But anyway, <laughs> well, this have, person is also in the tech space at this yes, point? Yes. Oh, both wow. Of us were in the tech so space. both of you are coming yes. at this disadvantage. And we are looking at, okay, but we wanted to bring some unique uh, perspectives that we had from other industries to the food world. Yeah. And so we decided, okay, we shelved this plan. We're going to go f learn about this and uh, create uh, all those things that we wanted to create using a franchise. So, but the cool part is we got um, to piggyback on a very young franchise. And that franchise... That also allows for a lot of innovation yeah. when you're in the early days. At least you grow with the franchise and you learn how they develop things and you get to be a part of very cool stuff. So yeah, you were actually solving problems as they came along as yes. opposed to finding somebody mature. Correct. Right? Like Correct. if you had gone to work for McDonald's, for example. Yeah, everything would be ready and We've yeah. already solved everything. Yes. I mean, except for the bit where, you know, people are turning away from that model, right? You know exactly. I, mean? Which, I don't know. I don't know how they're ever going to address that problem. Um, so... That's actually really interesting. How much time did you spend in somebody else's house then? So we still are. Actually, we have a, our franchise is still alive and well. Um, we uh, bet on Five Guys Burgers and Fries when they were seven stores. And uh, um, it's uh, today. I'm sorry, I had to laugh at the idea that it used to be seven guys. That was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And there are actually five brothers, and that's the name, uh, Five Guys. Right. And so we um, got into the business. We learned the ropes. An incredibly amazing franchisor in the sense that that's not usually what you hear um, typically in a yeah. relationship. The reason I say that is their commitment uh, to the product, mm -hmm. the commitment to the customer base. And they would do anything um, to protect the quality. Wow. And so that's usually rare. I would say... There are a lot of people who claim it, yeah. but I don't know that there's a lot of data behind a lot of those claims. Yeah. That, that's, that's more like the analytical way that I mm -hmm. look at that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that people set out maybe necessarily to uh, shortchange the customer. I think their, their vision of what's reasonable is maybe more constricted than other companies in that regard. True. And if you're, um, we had moments when tomatoes price would be the price of gold, literally. There were times like that. All the other restaurants would actually pull back. Right. Well, we did not skimp on tomatoes as a concept. So yeah. things like that, that where we hold tight to the principles and the values. So now you're into Indian food like you intended 14, 15 years ago. Yes. And, and the stage is set. Yes. So fast forward to 2011 is when we decided to look at, take a step back. What do we want to do? Yeah. And uh, wanted to create something very magical. And so we looked at uh, other possibilities, other franchise possibilities, it kept coming back to our dream of- Indian. The one you wanted, right. And Everything pales in comparison. 
that is um, that was our mad passion to go and build. And so we ended up um, decided, okay, this is what we're going to do. And that is a sales and marketing challenge, right? Because when you find people who don't already necessarily know what they're going to get, there's the great driving aspirational challenge of it. Like, oh, we're going we're gonna to make people want chana masala. Is yes. that how you say that? Yes. Great, because I've only ever bought it at the grocery wow. store. <laughs> And it, or there's the other thing where it's like, okay, well, we're just going to be hyper focused on the people who already buy this type of thing, and we're just going to be their only choice for it, right? And those are the two sort of divergent paths. I have to believe, based on the fact that you're sitting here, that you think you're going to win people over to something they've never tried before. Yes, absolutely. Right. People didn't know they needed an iPhone or an iPod, right? That's a great attitude. They don't know yet. Yeah, uh, that this is what they need. They need chula. And they need chula. <laughs> yeah, Indian barbecue. That's right. I'm a vegetarian though, so I hope we're not barbecuing anything for me. You know, uh, we are paneer Indian cheese, tofu, okay. and ve- vegetables. Uh, so we have a plethora of I, items for you. Okay, I'm allowed to stop by. Apparently, the welcome mat's been rolled out. Yes. When you're trying to familiarize people with a type of food they've never had before, are there guidelines that you've adopted? Are there things that you think are are the winning formula? Um, So what we decided was to take a few steps. First of all, um, the name, right? Right. Chula. It's with two O's, two A's, rolls off the tongue, uh, and it's not traditionally spelled like that. It's spelled C-H-U-L-H-A. Chulha is how it's said in India. That means... Um, oven, cooking oven. Oh, very good. And so we took a, you know, we created Chula with two O's and A's. And it's just so easy. I haven't met anybody who has misspelled that. Uh, And that was one of the first tests. And it's also a lot of fun. We can say, ah, Chula. There's right, right. A's, you can play right? with it, yeah. Yes, and then in our logo, we have a very disrupting uh, logo. It messes with your brain when you look at the two O's right on top of each other. Yeah. It makes you, you know, want to uh, stop, pause. It's what art. What is that? Yeah. It's, it's legitimate art. Yeah. Um, we'll share it on the website so people can see what we're talking about. It's, it's not fair to talk about it if they can't see it. But, um, yeah, you actually have... Um, at least one location that I remember seeing where it's actually in the window, right? Where it, it you're is. getting ready to roll out. Yes. And I remember seeing it from the street and going, hey, there's Raji's place. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew you were going to be co- coming on and it just happened to be on the same street. And it's East Liberty right now. Yeah, You'll see that. That's yeah. where I was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and when you see it, it, it is. It's it's artful. But yes. That's just the name, that's right? Just so the now name. you're looking. Now we get inside. That's right. And then, uh, how do we kind of make this uh, very approachable? Right. Right. That is one of the biggest things. While yeah. we want to remain authentic, I'm going to I'm going to interrupt you, and yes. I'm going to be a terrible host yes. and very rude. Please. Right. You know how people get performance anxiety at the ATM? Have you seen this? Yes. Where people freak out and they yes. drop stuff out the side window. Yes. Right. I don't think they want the same thing to happen when they're out of their car. That's right. Okay, so like, <laughs> if I'm in Chula and I and I have to ask, like, you know, what is paneer cheese, right? Yeah. What I'm doing is holding up the line. Right. And it puts this pressure on me, and I start to feel like the person who doesn't know. And before we turn the mics on, you remember I said something about how there's not enough people out there who are willing to not know things. That's right. Well, it's even worse with an. You audience. don't want to feel stupid, you right? You don't want to feel stupid. Yes. Yeah, and. And I'm fascinated by the challenge that you've taken on. I think Pittsburgh is ready for what you're working on. But as, a, as an academic discussion, like as an exercise, yes. I really want to get inside of your head as far as like, hey, you know what? This thing with two Ks sounds like it's going to be something that people are interested in. You're like, <laughs> Tika is not a complicated word. It's no, not. No. But people are like, well, that's not the way I'm used to words being spelled. So burgers again? Right? <laughs> so, so the big thing is when you walk in, that's your, you actually eat with your eyes, with mm. your, you know, sense of smell, the music, everything actually is a package, a total experience. So we don't talk about just selling food. Right. We're selling, creating joyful experiences. Cool. That's what we set out right yeah. from the beginning. So when you walk in, you see these soaring ceilings, right? Gorgeous. It feels like you've walked into an Apple store more like it okay. than, uh, you know, you would in a typical restaurant. And you walk in and you see photographs of food. Mm-hmm. And you can see, wow, I re- recognize that beautiful salmon. I can actually relate to it. I can see chicken. I can relate to that. Oh, that sauce. This is tikka sauce, which is tomato-based. Right. And uh, it looks beautiful with the chicken. So we use a lot of images uh, to convey you got uh, to. about our food. Because that, that language barrier is enough reason for... Um, 
I don't want to say cowardly, but the unbrave, right? To say like, well, I got to go home and Wikipedia this first. Yes. Right? I got to yes. know what it is. Yes. I'm pretty sure there's going to be sardines in there or something that I'm allergic to. And I just, I have to do my research. And, and that r- flies in the face to how these decisions get made. Yes. That's these decisions it's so get true. made quick. They get made on proximity. They get made on convenience. Like how long is the line? How good does it smell? Like that kind of stuff. That's right. And the smell is very critical factor. When you walk in, is this like something that is enticing, appealing, or is this something that's off-putting? Yeah. And uh, there are also misnomers. People think curry is a horrible thing. There are several people who would not eat at Indian restaurants because they've had a bad experience with well, curry. There's a lot of different types of curry. Yeah. And they will tell you that they had a curry, so they've had all curry. And I, I've met these people, right? Where, again, it's like, well, I can't be the guy who doesn't know. Now, an old person, right, who doesn't have anything to prove will change that, right? An old person is like, hey, orange looks good. What's that orange thing, right? <laughs> yes, you know? yes. Um, and kids too, right? Kids, kids also okay with like it. that as well. And um, nobody has to feel stupid in that sense. So what we do is go to great lengths. We display our ingredients. Yeah. Um, so the um, we have ingredients with a pedigree is what our chief marketing officer always says when he looks I at it. I saw this. Yeah. I saw this written and I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. And that's true because we use Bell and Evans chicken, Faroe Island salmon. So people know that, wow, this is the source. Uh, we go to great lengths. But how does when somebody walk in, even our podiums, the way they are structured, they're very friendly. You actually, we walk around and we're not having that you and me on the other side of each other. You mean like we have a setup right here at the table right now (laughs) while we record this show. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there is that uh, element of approachability there too. And then when you look at our menu board or you look around and you can see a transparent kitchen with these four beautiful tandoors, you watch people cooking your food. You can see it's coming out in skewers. Okay, it's not a mystery meat. Right, it's right. It's actually something that you can relate to. I completely agree with ingredients with a with a pedigree. You know, you focus on the quality. Panera that you mentioned earlier yes. did this quite a bit. Yes. Chipotle. Mm-hmm. Um, are they? I'm almost certain they're the ones pushing the no GMO. That's right. Right, and no matter where you stand on that, you can't argue with the fact that there's a a following for it. I totally agree. And I think they have done so much for the food industry. Oh, yeah. integrity into- They um, proved that it wasn't about cheap. Yeah. It's about what you put in your body. We care. So how many locations do you start with? So we opened our first one in 2014. Very good. Uh, We actually had test kitchens and we made sure that, you know, we were happy with uh, our process and food and- uh, the quality, we have an extraordinary team, nice. uh, incredible group of people that, uh, the leadership that put this together. But there's, there's gotta be like a phase plan in here. I can there was. feel it. Cause <laughs> I saw the way five guys took the world and you said you learned a lot from yes. that experience. So we opened the first one and didn't do anything for two years. How about so that? 2014, November, just recently was our birthday, uh, three year birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. And then, uh, this year we decided, uh, we were going to uh, take the rest of the world on, at least East Coast on. Well, I right? was going to say, that's a big <laughs> leap, like one whole world. Yes, um, a small leap. Um, so this time we went to Virginia. Yeah. Um, we opened in Fairfax, Virginia, Sterling, Virginia, and we opened in King of Prussia. Do you own them? Yeah. Are you going to go the franchise route? So too early for us, um, Scott, honestly. To decide? To uh, you know, make uh, any serious decisions on that realm, because first step is to make this um, you know, in multiple markets, right? Get the recipe down Get, first. You know, so we have an infrastructure that we have been working incessantly on, and we want to make sure that it's, it delivers the promise that we say we are about. And uh, so, what did they say? The old saying that it's uh, crawl before you run, mm-hmm. yeah, or crawl before you walk. It's and very important. An ounce of prevention, yeah, it's worth a pound of cure. Yeah, there's a reason why we were d- deliberate. We didn't want to just jump into a new uh, store opening for two years. We wanted to make sure we got our, you know, legs first. A lot of times I talk to people and before their business is even taken in its first dollar, um, they are hell bent on it being a billion dollar industry, right? Um, yes. Good isn't good enough, right? And, and you know, I realized after you started answering the question that maybe you were taking a more thoughtful approach to it than, than the question maybe begged. But um, I think a lot of times... Um, people are thinking in terms of fast casual as what can I put on every street corner, sell early, get out, buy an island. And I think it depends on what the end outcome is for someone. 
For us, the dream is Chula in every corner of the globe, and it's a quality that we can be very proud of. Um, we are crazy uh, students of uh, quality and excellence, um, so we follow the Malcolm Baldrige framework uh, and our processes, and we are huge students of um, great processes with great results. I don't know. That sounded like a foreshadowing for running for the... Uh for the Baldridge, Baldridge Awards? <laughs> Is that one of the things that's on your plan? Uh, so it's not about the award itself. It's about the journey. Mm -hmm. We learned so much. Benchmarking is something that we do uh, a lot. Oh, as an engineer, yeah, right? I, I mean, this, this is hand to glove for you. And that's something that Baldrige taught us to be even more robust in. And uh, before we even started on this journey, we wrote an organizational profile of what Chula would look like. And... Uh, that's how the journey started for us. Well, you've had time to get it like in your, in your head. What do you want it to be? Right? Yes. From 2003, you've been sitting here thinking about like, what is the ideal character of this thing that I will eventually make my big push? This is, this is you pushing your chips into the middle of the table, right? Yes. This is your big We're bet. all in. Yes. So yeah, I mean, you, you were very cautious and you, you thought about what you want it to look like. Um, let's say just for argument's sake. Yes. Right? Um, you decide to go in a franchise direction. Okay. Um, what is it that works when you're trying to bring on franchisees? So, um, and having been part of Five Guys, we have seen that too. Right. So there are people who believe in uh, the concept and they're not trying to change it to um, their own version. Okay. There is that group, right, that actually signs on. And then there is the group that actually might have experiences with other brands and want to bring that expertise into it. Okay. So it's a choice um, from the franchisee perspective. Right. Uh, and when you choose to actually buy into the franchisor's vision, it's just beautiful because you're just following uh, the footsteps of something that has been great and you bought into it because of its greatness. So what happens is uh, when you're not happy with the solution that you actually you know, decided to invest in, that can create for an awfully crappy relationship. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But do you think part of it sometimes is the fact that um, there's not enough groundwork done? The reason I ask is because is yeah. this seems like a place where you might. Yeah. And, and forgive me for putting words in your mouth. No, right? no, but no. Just follow me through on this, right? Yes. So you, I'm going to go back to the fact that you're an engineer and I'm going to say, you love the documentation and the detail and the fact that somebody has thought this all the way through. Ooh, yes. This predisposes you, in my view, to being that person you just described in terms of like to, to attracting that franchisee because you will have documentation for this is why we do this. This is the continuous improvement that we did. Um you know, determining what should be, you know, on this part of the, the serving buffet and that part, and yes. these doors and, yes. you know, this, uh, uh, artwork on the wall, it's all been carefully crafted and you will actually be able to make the argument for every decision. So I'll tell you, this is a journey. It yes. hasn't been that easy. I wasn't always this, uh, shall we say, clear in my um, verbiage on that. You seem very um, laid back about all this. Yeah, No, I'm, I'm not no, joking. That's not, yeah, that's not me so taking a shot. I mean, it was it. just uh, that uh, in the beginning, we had better ideas, a lot of them, mm -hmm. until we realized that some of these ideas actually changed the concept, right? right. And that's not what the concept is about. It took some, uh, you know, we were also one of those franchisees who wanted to bring in our own version in the beginning, yeah. right? Um, but when we learned the passion and the reason for something being the whys behind something, yeah. when you understand that, that's when you, okay, this is what I invested in. So um, that East Liberty one, when does that open? January 26th. Oh, wow. That's not yes, far away at all. It's now. not far away. Uh, especially when you consider that we're recording this before it'll actually hit the interwebs. So... Hey, this might actually work out for you. <laughs> this might actually, from a promotional perspective, pan well, out. I hope people uh, come and check it out because it should be a fun of uh, fun experience. Something that is uh, for people who know Indian food, there will be ratatouille moments. Mm -hmm. For people uh, who are not, uh, uh, you know, known, they, who are not familiar with Indian food, they can just walk in and experience the craveability of it. Um, out of curiosity. Um just for the people who are listening in, can you drop that address so that they would know? I mean, because we a lot of our listeners are local, right? Sure. Uh, it's uh, 6114 Center Avenue. I'm so glad you had that after I put you on the spot too, right? <laughs> it's like, let's see if she memorized it. 
<laughs> yes, and uh, there is a parking garage right next to uh, our store. So, oh, wow. And there is a 45-minute free parking. You are buttering up the Pittsburgh <laughs> customer with that. Wait, there's parking? Wait, there's free parking? Yeah. That's insane. Yes. Um, I have one other question, and it just occurred to me, and I wish it would have come to me in order while we were talking about it. I want to go back, go back for a quick second. You had said something about um, sort of like an educational aspect of the art and the things that are going on the wall, right? Yes. Um, when, when I see those, a lot of times, I see things that get dated quickly, right? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people kind of just stick it on the wall at the outset and yes. then they don't change it. Right? Yes. Um, from a purely just marketing mechanics perspective, I'm yes. curious, like, do you keep a, and this is just, this is me being a nerd, like wondering how it works inside the machine. Like, do you keep a schedule for every three months we change the art? For every one month we change the menu boards? For every three years we change the layout of the store? How does the look and, and feel of the environment change? So the menu boards are digital. Right. And we also have information boards that are digital. That's brilliant. So that way we can keep Changes them fresh, daily if you want. And, yeah, fresh and uh, active. And the art itself, these are pictures of food uh, and we have actually change them mm -hmm. as we innovate or something new comes on it. And uh, food is such a beautiful art piece. And you have to come see this for yourself, how amazing that looks. It I'm looks like something, to, yeah. yeah. And um, so that is, we keep it fresh. And that's one of the most, It's one of the first things yeah. I notice, yeah. right? It's, yeah. uh, in my view, it's how you can tell whether or not a, a uh, location has started to go south. Yeah. Is it, they haven't refreshed frequently enough. You can, you can tell that there's that pile of dust on top of like the CCTV camera and on top of the, you know, picture frame and you go, Oh, this is one of those places that <laughs> yeah, kind of used to be popular. That's right. That's right. Like every donut shop seems like it's from 1983. <laughs> You know, if you're, it's, it's a highly engaged process. So we design is as important to us as food is in our right. world. And so the experience of walking in and the experience of how it looks and how you eat, um, training is a huge part of what we do. It's a total nonverbal cue. Yeah. I'm looking for data yeah. that tells me, and I beat this horse to death. I apologize. You're getting it too. But every sale is about what does this purchase say about me? That's right. And if it says I'm the guy who shops in the dusty place, then I'm not feeling great about me. Right? Or if you feel proud about taking, you discovered this place and yes. you're bringing your family or a significant other, uh, there's a sense of pride. Come check out this place I yeah. love is a great I sentence. I recommended it, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you take somebody and you, you take somebody to a place where all of a sudden they're like, why is it dirty? Or, you know, like, why is everything from 30 years ago? And how embarrassing would that be for the person? Same actually, idea, yes, right? Yes, you know, it's yeah. a statement about me. It's always, especially it's in, the, in the very interesting, Scott. I actually had never heard it framed like that. You're so right. Every experience is about I that. I wish I could claim it, right? I, I don't even know where I picked it up, but I've been harping it for so many years now. It's That's like breathing awesome. for me. Everything is about what what you watch on TV, what you listen to on on the radio. It's all a statement of your identity and who you want people to think you are, right? Or sometimes you like truly know that's who you are. And, you know, in, even in that case. Oh, yeah, there's still some connect. honest people. Yeah. yeah <laughs> not a lot. Um, <laughs> if people want to check you out on the internet, where do they go? They go to chula.com. They can even go to Facebook and Chula Yum is our handle. Oh, uh, very for nice. Twitter and uh, Facebook. I'm going to try to do this Instagram. from memory. Ready? Yes. C-H-O-O-L-A-A. -A. Is there an H at the end? Yes. All right. And then if it's Facebook, we have to add Yum at the end. Yes. Yum at the end. Roger, thank you so much thank for coming in. Thank you so much. This was so wonderful. Well, I, I can't claim much. Buzzy did all the work. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. All right, that's all the time we've got this week. Thanks to Raji. Make sure you check out, if you're in Pittsburgh, check out Chula. Um, it's a pretty convenient location. And frankly, I know that there's a lot of listeners in that part of town. So um, just because I like Raji as a person, I'm going to give her that quick shout out and say, hey, it's already in your backyard. Go check out, you know, get a little bit of curry, get a little bit of, uh, I don't know what else is on the menu. I haven't been there yet. But whatever it is, taste it because she's a nice lady. Um, We'll be back in about seven days. I hope to catch you then. And uh, again, just a quick reminder, if you liked the show, don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you next Wednesday. The Pitchworks Podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart, LLC. 
Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S dot com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.